Uh, Shanika is the one time world championship silver medalist, one time Pan, Pan Am Games silver medalist, one time Olympic Games finalist, and three time world championship finalist. That's a lot of accolades, uh, Shanika. And welcome to our pristine conversations. It's a real privilege and honor to have you. And I'm really, really delighted that you took the opportunity and the time to share with us. So, where are you today? I know it has been quite a challenge for athletes globally, and including their performance, and you are a high performing athlete. So tell us about how these challenging times, how did you navigate and how did you pivot? Thank, first of all, thanks so much for having me again. It's always a pleasure speaking with you. Um, Thank you. One of the ways that we try to get through the challenging times as athletes is to just, you know, focus on the goals that we have. And even though there's a lot of restrictions regarding COVID and stuff like that, we just try our best to maintain um, training as best as possible um, to work around the restrictions. So if the, um, the time is like, we have a certain amount of time that we are able to train each day so we just try our best to work with, with those times and um, to just focus on the goals that we have for the season and to just do the best that we can and control the things we can control. Wow, that's so nicely put, control what we can control. So it's basically what we have in front of us, take action, yes. focus on what we have presently rather than what we don't have. And this is quite a lesson for, you know, normal human beings like myself where we are not high performing athletes but your message is so clear and hope that you know our listeners will take note of it so mental mental health has been you know on the rise it has been on everyone you know everywhere it became popular during this time what are some of the tips uh, for um to be mentally strong what what are some of your tips and what would advice would you give to, especially to the young people? Um, in terms of mental health, I think um, it should be everyone's priority. Um, we have to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves because if you're not strong mentally, you can't perform to the best of your ability physically. So um, one of the main things that I tell young athletes, especially, is to get help if you need help in terms of speaking with sports psychologists or just speaking with uh, a licensed therapist who can help you get through some of the challenges that you might, you might be facing in your personal life, in training, um, that you just can't seem to shake off because COVID is new. So nobody knows how to deal with COVID. So um, it's okay to not know or to feel frustrated or to have anxiety or to be depressed because things are going um, the way that you, things aren't going the way that you envision them to, 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 to go. So I think mental health is everyone's responsibility and we just have to make sure that we take our own health in our hands. Yeah, well said, Shanika. What was one challenge you experienced, you know, really that you had some sort of difficulties to, to navigate during the last two years? Um, I think one of the major challenges was not the uncertainty of not knowing what to expect with COVID. Um, there were times when we had to stay home all the time and we're not used to that. We are social beings. We are used to going, you know, to training. We are used to going to the supermarkets and, you know, um, parties or, or the movies or whatever um, we choose to go to. And then to just be at home not being able to leave the home due to lockdown restrictions. Um, that's been a big challenge for me, especially because I, I don't, as much as I like staying at home, I like, the, I like to know that I, I have the freedom to go out as well. Um, so I think it was adapting and knowing that this will not last and just making sure that um, I stay home and just make sure I do the things that are necessary um, not just for myself, but for the country and for the world, because it's COVID and nobody knows exactly how to deal with these issues. And the governments, they're doing everything in their power to um, help control the situation as best as they can. So 
So where where are things today? I know I'm here in Europe and it has lifted, you know, the ban has lifted and we are now walking around without a mask and it feels mm -hmm. a bit um, odd. <laughs> there are many um, strange, you know, things that came out of, you know, wearing a mask, some really affected in terms of getting allergic reactions and also some became so easily adapted to wearing a mask. It became the norm. So now walking around, you feel like a bit, wow, I'm, we're missing something. Where are you guys today in Jamaica in terms of still wearing a mask or not? Um, right now we're still wearing masks, um, taking precautions, social distancing and stuff like that. Um, in terms of lockdown, we're not really in a lockdown right now, but um, there are certain times that you have to be home. So for example, by 10 o'clock PM. So the lockdown would be like from 10 o'clock PM until 5 AM, which is like bedtime. Um, so um, we're doing better in terms of the numbers. Um, so I think it's much better than it was last year. Yeah, that's great. That's, that's good news for everyone. <laughs> who has been, you know, like things have moved forward for us. And actually we just have to face this new reality. And some of us made, I would say, they made hay while the sun shine or made hay while things were bad and they have leveraged, they've grown into like made a business successful while some went under. But what was one of your uh, major positive, you know, impact in your life out of COVID? Uh, I think um, COVID helps us to become more flexible in terms of um, adapting, as you said earlier. Um, in previous years, we would never feel comfortable going out with masks on. Um, sometimes you're, you, you wear the mask throughout the day and for like um, healthcare workers, some of them wear the mask until it looks like it's cutting into their skin just because that's what you have to do. And I think um, COVID helped all of us to be more flexible and to just learn to adapt and to just carry on whatever life chose that you just know that it's, you didn't choose it, but you just have to learn to work with it and to just continue to do what you need to do to get to the goals that you have. Absolutely, I totally agree. When yes. we lemons are thrown at us, we make lemonade. Is, is about adaptation and my daughter I love to show her this is like a metaphor and she was walking around just yesterday without both of us we were walking around without a mask and she said I feel like I'm missing something and then we had this short <laughs> conversation I'm yeah. like yeah I, I was just like drawing to her attention that as human beings we are easily adaptable we can adapt um it's just working with <laughs> our mind and changing certain things and rewiring our brain and getting rid of uh, changing our limiting beliefs about the things that really you know hold us back and making us less adaptable to situations. So what you said is really is poignant. Um, what are some of your healthy tips? I, I'm a food connoisseur, I love eating, and I came, we share a similar background uh, from the Caribbean, and I love Caribbean food, and you know, the warmth of the Caribbean, the, the vegetables, it's quite different, and I do miss it, living in Switzerland, I would sometimes get the exotic foods, but the vegetables, but it's not the same, and uh, what are some of your absolute favorite dishes, or some of the things you you made that you just stepped out of your comfort zone and made during COVID? Um, some of the things that I made. Um, so during COVID, I I remember one time I made um, whole, wheat, whole wheat bread <laughs> from oh, <wow>. scratch. <laughs> yeah, so I saw this uh, recipe, recipe on YouTube and I thought, well, we were out of bread and I wanted bread, but I didn't want to go on the road. So I decided I think to- we got, I think we, we got cut off there, so. Hello. Yeah, so um, I- I think we got cut off. Yeah. yeah. You can so, start over, sorry. I think we got cut off. Yeah, you can start over. 
So uh, mm -hmm. one of the recipes that I tried during um, COVID was to make whole wheat bread from scratch. I saw wow. this. <laughs> I saw this recipe on YouTube and I've never made bread before. I've made like non bread and um, flat bread, but not like the actual bread that you buy in the um, stores. Yeah. So I saw this <laughs> recipe on YouTube and I decided to try it. I've got, I had yeast and everything and it came out pretty good. I was like, uh, but I didn't try it after that. So congratulations. Um, <laughs> thank you. And I also made, uh, what was one of the I made um, muffins, so like banana muffins and banana bread and stuff like that. Awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah. What are some of the um, typical Jamaican dishes that you would recommend? Um, I know our listeners are curious about, um, <laughs> are curious about you know learning new things from different cultures. Uh, would you like to share some? Um, for me, I think. A lot of persons already know about the curry goat and the um, oxtail and the Akian sawfish. I think a lot of persons would enjoy stew peas if they actually tried it. Oh my God, um, I'm my mind is watering for stew peas. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> so you can make it the vegan way, which is the way I like to make it most mm -hmm. of the time. Because my my husband is vegetarian. So like instead of the meat, I would put like saltfish or any other fish in it and you know you use like the red um red peas and coconut milk um yeah i think people would enjoy that <laughs> oh that sounds yummy i yeah <laughs> i can't wait i'm gonna try the two peas i think yeah. that will be awesome an awesome dish two peas i love plantains as well I totally love plantains, red bees, all the bees. I think they are just absolutely great source of proteins in our mm -hmm. daily diet. And I know I've been to Jamaica and we do share very similar dishes. So yeah. let's wrap this up. It's a very short conversation. And mm -hmm. what are three pillars of success coming from Shanika? Three what? I'm sorry. Could you repeat please? Okay, hold on one second, Shanika. I'm not sure what happened. Okay, go ahead. Um, I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? I heard three, but I didn't hear anything after. Okay, what are your pillars for success? Three pillars for success. Yes, uh, three pillars for success. Um, the first one would be hard work. I believe in hard work. I am the product of hard work. Uh, discipline which is self-explanatory and just being perseverant and going through whatever it is that you find challenging and just making it to the other side. COVID is a challenge, persevering through COVID and reaching your goals. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. And how do you see gratitude in our daily lives? How do, we, how do I see gratitude? Yeah. How, what, what's your... What's your take on gratitude? Um, I think gratitude is the foundation of life. Um, we have to be grateful for everything. Um, I feel like once you are grateful for the fact that you are alive, you exist with a certain knowledge and just knowing that you are here for a reason, um, it's bigger than you. And yeah. you exist in such a way where it not only benefits yourself, but it benefits others and, you know, the entire world. Thank you for that, Shanika. That was absolutely beautiful. I want to say thank you so much. So one more question before you go. Uh, do you have any upcoming events this year you want to share with us so we can look out for you on social media and also follow you wherever you are in the world and just cheer you on? <laughs> So um, two of my major competitions this year will be the World Championships in Portland, Oregon. That's in the United States. I will what? be there. And also the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham, England, shortly after. And both of them are in the summer. So it's in July to August. Wow. Congratulations on that. And we 
Thank I'm you. sure our audience listen would want to wish you as well. <laughs> so coming from everyone, we wish you much success on your journey you. and in at these events, major events. And I'm sure you will put yourself up there and represent <laughs> Jamaica to the highest level. I know you are such a beautiful soul and you. wish you nothing but success. And thank you so much, Anika, for, for your time again. And I hope to see you soon in Switzerland. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure as usual. Yeah. And I wish you nothing but success as well. Take care. Thank you. One second before you go, Shanika, I just want to take, uh, let me just take a, a screenshot, screenshot so I can share it. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I have to do it on the phone. Let me just turn the light. This, the light is just so bright on my face. <laughs> yeah, I'll be like my hair. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. Do one more. Cool. Thank you. So I really appreciate it. And yeah. we will catch up, send me your address and just continue to fill out a form and I will send it as soon as I can. Okay. Okay. I will do that. Yeah. Um, so really appreciate it. All right. Bye.